Matthew, I've been dying to hear what you think about everything and mostly about what it says about whether President Biden has a, a, a partner on the other side, someone to work with that stands for something other than letting Trump off the hook. I don't think he has a partner. I think he has an adversary on the other side. And, and I'm I'm not over. I'm not convinced that the split is so bad in the Republican Party that they can't still win elections. I I remember that the Republicans in 2016, there was this whole discussion that there's a huge rift in the party because Donald Trump's a nominee and he can't win. And then he becomes president of the United States. And then four years of Donald Trump and all of the things he did and all the norms he broke and all the parts of the Constitution he ran over and he gets 74 million votes and comes within 50,000 votes of winning the Electoral College. And he gets simultaneously more Republican votes than he got he got in 2020 more Republican votes than he got in 2016, by far, by a large number and a higher percentage of Republicans. And so until we, going back to something Claire said, and until, and I think Joe Biden needs to be a part of this, until we really examine the soil upon which Donald Trump, the weed of Donald Trump grew out of, we are not going to solve this problem. We are, every time in our history, and you and I, Nicole, have talked about this before, every time in our U.S. history, when we've moved on too fast from some injustice, the injustice that existed continues longer and farther and spreads wider. Keep in mind, Barack Obama got elected president in 2008, and everybody said, okay, we can now move on from race. Well, we knew that was wrong. Right. We've discovered that moving on from race was wrong. And so I think the Republican Party has to do some soul searching. I think Joe Biden has to figure out who his partners in Washington fundamentally really are. It may be just six or seven or eight Republicans. But I think this is a question for Joe Biden is what is going on in the soil of America that has not been excavated, that allowed this to grow and allowed it to foster in such a way that a mob ended up at the Capitol and the person that led the mob isn't convicted? Well, Matthew, nobody understands what's growing in the soil of America better than you do as a student of history and public opinion. What is it? To me, it goes back to a fundamental thing which has happened before in our country's history, uh, which is every time the country and every time a more diverse group of voters in our country is empowered or comes to leadership positions, it happened running up to the Civil War. It happened in the movement of the civil rights uh, as we saw in the course of it, and it's happened now. The country is a, is a multi-diverse democracy, and there's a group of voters, a very large, small group of voters, who does not like that. And we, it's as if we are still fighting the battles. We won the military battle of the, cult of the Civil War. We have not won the cultural battle that still existed in the aftermath of the Civil War that was fundamentally not done. There is a group, as I say, a group of voters who thinks they're the real Americans and Donald Trump in their mind represented the real America and they are still willing to continue that fight of keeping the levers of power outside the hands of the diverse country that we now are. That is fundamentally our fight today and whether or not democracy is only for a small group of people or for the country as a whole. And we have to figure out what structures, what ways of educations, which way of civics, can somehow uncover that so we can move on and believe again that all men and women are created equal. You know, Claire, I, I'm still mulling over President Biden's statement about the frailty of democracy. And what Matthew's saying really underscores that, that these are people who believe in hanging on to a past that was heinous for its inequality, for its brutality. And they care about that more than they care about democracy. I mean, that it feels like a, a generations long endeavor. Well, I, you know, I totally agree with Matthew, but I would also point this out. Uh, the president fed a grievance um, and he did it in a bold and disgusting way. And he did it day after day with lies and with various things, policies he enacted. He fed that angry grievance that is the result of the resentment that Matthew referred to. So the question is, does Joe Biden have to win all of those people over or does he have to do better with 60 to 65 percent of the country? 
I believe he'll concentrate on the 60 to 65 percent of the country. Right now, his approval rating is all, all already brushing up against 60. And he is working on policies that wide swaths of Americans support, regardless of their party. If he keeps doing that, if he keeps stressing the policies that matter to people, whether it's getting rid of college debt or whether it's infrastructure or whether it's COVID relief or raising the minimum wage, he will be able to reassure those people that were kind of on the bubble. Is this going to be socialism? Is this the end of the world? Is this the end of our country? That Joe Biden as president is not anything to be feared. It's something to be welcomed. And I think he's going to be able to find enough senators who feel guilty enough, Republican senators, about what they just participated in, that he's going to be able to get a lot of that done. Matthew, I want to give you the last word. And I mean, to Claire's point, that that I think that's right, how he governs. But if you read the new reporting in The Washington Post, the entire Department of Homeland Security is in need of being pivoted toward protecting Americans from Americans, because that group of people who have the belief system you articulated now represent a domestic terror threat. Well, they not only represent a domestic terror threat, but we have, for the first time in our history, one political party that represents only a minority of the country. And the reason why it's empowered is because the structures of our democracy, as they exist today, empower them. And so I agree with Claire. I think Joe Biden represents a majority of the country. The problem is the way our de democracy now unfolds and, and it is designed in its structures allows that small group of people to be way more empowered than they should be. Look at the United States Senate. United States, six members of the United States Senate have the same population as 60 members of the United States Senate. Think about that. Six members of the Senate yeah. have the same population as 60. And we have gerrymandering, which over overemphasizes a certain portion of our population. So, yes, I think Joe Biden can govern from the middle can govern the majority of the country, but he's going to run square into unless we unless we all figure this out square into the way our democracy is organized and the way political parties are done that prevents what the majority wants from happening. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.